Beyond Dreaming, a guide to awakening consciousness through the path of astral projection and out-of-body experiences by Jean Hart, Part 28, Transcending the Body. Society teaches us how to look after the physical body throughout our lives. We study science and medicine and our parents and doctors tell us what medications to take for specific ailments. We get bruises, scratches, and break our bones. One can attain all the material wealth in the world, but it can bear no value when an illness arrives. When you are ill, there is only one focus, to feel better. In modern day, what we see emphasized in the news is what illness you could develop and rarely how you could prevent them naturally. Emotions are simply a reflection of how our body feels about thoughts in the mind. Emotions are a deeper level of thinking and intuiting. It is a disgrace that in our society, we are taught all too much to think and rarely to feel. Or what's worse, we are commonly taught to feel fear through fear-based thinking, especially if one watches the news on TV often. The same goes for when many hear about astral projection. What a shame. Astral projection is a remarkable ability of immeasurable possibility. Yet, when people hear about it, the first thing that comes to mind is fear-based thoughts when there is absolutely no need. We don't have to just change what we think, but how we think. Awakening consciousness is synonymous with learning how to transcend the physical body through astral projection. Furthermore, transcending the physical body is absolutely synonymous with self-healing. But what is transcending the body? It is a profound realization that you are not your body. It is when you stop identifying with the body. However, we don't transcend the body by trying to forget it. Instead, we enter the body and become acutely aware of it. The body is a gateway a temple to a higher intelligence. The same is done with the mind also. We don't transcend the mind by ignoring it, but by occupying and understanding it. Such a thing can barely be talked about and only experienced. As repeated throughout this book, this is something that must be experienced beyond the mind, in your awareness. This is Gnosis, as taught by Gnostic groups, Gnosis is defined in its purest form as knowledge based on experience, as opposed to belief or intellectual theory. Prolonged and consistent meditation enables one to observe and become one with the body with no thoughts, just pure awareness. This act of rooted observation helps you innately realize that you are not your body, and in this realization, you will be less attached naturally. Thus, you will more easily separate from your physical body when the time comes and more easily identify with your spiritual body, the energy that animates and occupies your physical body. This is difficult to imagine only when we have lack of practice and experience. Can a spirit possess you while you're out of body? You'll find a lot of misinformation and fear mongering about this. It is all utter nonsense. Astral projection is absolutely safe and natural. There aren't many ways to actually prove that it's safe, but here are two logical points. One, the astral body is connected to the physical body in a similar way that a radio is connected to frequencies. You can't have one without the other. Projecting implies one location to another, so two locations, not just one. You can be on the other side of the galaxy but still be connected to your physical body. You could look into the silver cord about this. Two, the fact that we all astral project every night unconsciously anyway, implies that it is most likely safe since you don't see anyone becoming possessed, do you? In a sense, it's actually safer to practice astral projection than it is not to, because at least then you'd be conscious of what you're doing and being influenced by night. Of course, you can't really know whether we astral project unconsciously every night until you become experienced yourself. Still, I and many authors and experienced astral projectors will agree on this. Protection. 
it's first essential to understand that the best protection is one of being on a level of consciousness that naturally emanates universal and unconditional love for all beings, where fear is far from your natural state. However, here's a general guide on what you can do if you are the type of person who is still afraid of things in the astral plane. Keep an altar as a symbol to protect your home while you astral project. It should be square shaped with the white cloth on it. Burn a white candle on it all the time or whenever you're present in the house. Place deities or symbols you consider holy, sacred, or powerful. Burn incense, preferably real frankincense or copal resin burned on charcoal disc in a clay pot. Visualize and cast a circle of fire or light of protection around your house three times. You can combine this with prayer and mantras. You can ask angels, masters, guides, or any other type of positive astral helper for help with protection. This will also help with experiencing fewer nightmares. I won't go into it much here, but there are thousands of beings in the astral who are committed to helping humanity with their spiritual progress. Many will listen to your call if you are genuine and sincere. As you cast the circle of protection while visualizing the fire or light, you can say something like, angels, masters, and guides of the astral plane, protect this house in a spiritual camouflage so that no evil or darkness can penetrate it. Cast away all kinds of darkness and any other kinds of related evil or negative forces or energies. You can finish this with the mantra Om or Amen three times. Do all this with positive emotions and complete faith.